cyclotron is for accelerating heavy ion beams. Uh, we use them to make heavy elements and super heavy elements and study the nuclear physics associated with them. So it starts out with ion sources. Uh, up above the cyclotron, we have three different ECR ion sources. That's electron cyclotron resonance sources. And they're basically magnetic bottles to hold plasmas uh, to produce multiply charged ions uh, that are then ejected from those sources and uh, injected into the cyclotron for acceleration. A lot of our experiments are, are done with special isotope of calcium. It's mass number 48. It's especially neutron rich. And so we can get more neutrons into the final products. So in the cyclotron, this is a, a device that was invented by Ernest Lawrence. The laboratory is named after him. Uh, basically, if you have a charged ion moving in a magnetic field, it tends to move in a circle. And so these ions are moving in a circular orbits in the cyclotron and uh, it's set up with some electrodes so that every time the ion goes around it gets a little uh, kick from an electric potential and comes to a slightly higher energy and so each subsequent orbit through the cyclotron takes on a slightly higher radius as the en energy gets larger until it gets to the outside radius of the cyclotron and then the ions are extracted from the cyclotron and sent down the beam line towards our experiment. We use beam intensities of two particle microamps up to two particle microamps. That's about 10 to the 13 ions per second. Uh, and energies are a Coulomb barrier energies. And so for calcium, that's about 240 MeV. For the heavy element experiments that we do, we're looking for compound nucleus formation. Uh, that's where the nucleus of the beam coalesces with the nucleus of, the tar of a target atom to produce a single compound nucleus. That compound nucleus then has to de-excite to the ground state. And it's all a very rare process. Um, for element 115, about, we make about one element 115 atom for every 10 to the 18 calcium 48 beam particles that pass through the target. So the beam particles will come down the beam line and in this box we have uh, just a radiation containment uh, glove box and inside there is a target which looks something like this. This is actually not a target, it's just titanium backing foils. Basically the beam passes through the target material, through the backing material and into the target material. In the case of element 115 that would be americium. Americium with mass number 243. It's in the form of a thin layer of oxide on the target. As the beam passes through the target it creates heat. And actually we're producing about 20 watts of heat. So that would be enough to melt the titanium backing foils, which you see here. So what we do is we have the target on a rotating wheel. And then the beam passes through this part of the wheel. The wheel rotates around. So each piece of the target has 50 milliseconds to cool off before it enters the beam again and keep the target at a safe temperature. The magnetic separator that we have behind, the Berkeley gas filled separator, its purpose is to separate the element 115 products that we produce, maybe one atom per day, from the 10 to the 13 ions per second coming through for calcium 48 and uh, many orders of magnitude more of unwanted nuclear reaction products. So the Berkeley gas field separator is very efficient at taking these compound nucleus products, say element 115, and delivering it to our detector. This is our focal plane detector. It is what allows us to see that one event of element 114 or whatever atom we're currently looking for at that day. And it has kind of two parts. I can take off this here. So to decide. This is the main part of our detector. And it's made from three silicon strip detectors that form the shape of a corner of the cube. So there's one here, here, and one on the other side. So this detector sits at the very back of our instrument. And whatever element we're interested in looking at, we make, it flies through our setup, and then it implants directly into one of these three detector chips. So when the element 115 enters the detector, we're able to record the time that it entered the detector, the position it entered the detector, and the energy with which it entered the detector. And, it, and now it turns out that this element 115 isotope has a short half-life, and it emits alpha particles radiation, alpha particle radiation. Um, and so we look at the position in the detector where we saw the implantation and wait for the alpha decay. It has a characteristic energy. And once again, we measure the energy. We measure the position in the detector and the time. It also, that leaves behind an element 113 atom in the detector, which is also radioactive, emitting alpha particles with a characteristic half-life and energy. 
we measured the half-life, the energy, and the time. These alpha decays continue through element 111, 109, 107, and finally down to element 105. And so by the time the whole decay chain that starts from element 115 is done, we've measured five alpha energies, five lifetimes, uh, all happening at the same position in the detector as that original atom implanted. And that's enough information so that we can identify element 115 based on a single atom.